uh, does it mean that every conflict uh, is solved in with the structure of a judicial committee? No, no not uh, at all. If everything was solved in the judicial committee, we'd have heaps and heaps of paperwork and we'd never keep up with ourselves or with the suits. People just try to figure it out and solve problems between themselves rather than go to the committee. But if you need, if you need help to resolve an issue, then sure, it's the way to go. I think there's a misunderstanding by a lot of people that just because there's a judicial committee, that that's the only way problems are solved. Um, you, know, you know, if I have a dis dispute with someone, um, I, can, I can solve that problem with him in any way I choose. We can talk it out, we can get a third person to help us, you know, moderate it, maybe we can work out some agreement, maybe we can try to understand each other's feelings, and those, those are all different possibilities that uh, the existence of a judicial committee doesn't exclude. But the judicial committee exists for those times when we can't work it out and when someone is hurting someone else and that person that's being hurt needs to be protected. And in that case, the judicial committee, I think, has a right and a responsibility to do what it can to protect the victim. And if that means that the person hurting the victim ends up getting hurt because of it, I think that that's necessary. That's the, that's the way um, justice sometimes has to work. We actually discussed in the school meeting, which is a different meeting, it's mainly an administrative meeting. Uh, we talked about the judicial committee process a little bit, and we talked about how um, this formal process was kind of a bit time consuming. It really took up a lot of people's time, you know, because you have a committee that, you know, potentially could meet every day at the school. And, you know, the, for the people who serve on that committee, you know, it gets to be a lot of their time. You know, they always have to be at school at a certain time, and they have are always required to be at the meeting and to participate and things like that. Well, the Judicial Committee, if, you, if it's your, your month to be on, you have to be at the meeting. Also when you don't want. Yeah. I, That's I, right. Even if you don't want, you have to be there. Yeah, okay. You know, we talked about this formal process and then what we actually decided was we added something to the, the process itself, the judicial process itself at our school that said, well, you know, if it's possible, you really, you know, people should really try to solve things informally first. So that might mean, you know, a staff member sitting down with a student and saying, you know, these are some things I see happening at the school and let's talk about how, you know, if you need some help, you know, you're always leaving messes, so is there a way that we can help you to remind you to clean up your messes or whatever. And I think that a lot of people at our school would prefer to do things informally you know, because people don't want to sit around in meetings all the time, you know, they have more interesting things that they want to do. If enough people in the school community feel that, you know, you can resolve things informally, then that kind of, um, that kind of mechanism is going to be put into place in, in some way. Either it can be part of your law book, or it could just be part of the culture of the school. Normally, if two people yell at each other and call each other names or things like that, you know, that if they were going to be charged with breaking a rule, they would be charged with breaking the rule that says um, that everyone has a right to exist peacefully at school free from verbal or physical harassment yeah. is the, the way that the law reads, you know, 200.01 we call it, you know. <laughs> That's what they would be charged with. Yeah. Now, if people are willing to say, we worked it all out, then probably there's no need to charge, I mean, because 200.01 implies that the person still feels like their rights were violated, you know. And um, so those kinds of things, what, what we do is we, um, you know, we say, well, you know, are you interested in mediating the complaint? And they'll say, yeah, that's good. You know, we'll mediate it. You know, that's okay. You understand that when you said that, you know, she got really mad and that you understand, you know, even though you got really mad, it wasn't okay to do something back to him. Yeah, we understand. And then, then they're done. Oh, okay. And we just write mediated and no one gets charged with anything. Oh, okay. um, on the other hand, if somebody actually hits somebody, like for real, mm -hmm. That you can't just mediate away, you know. That if, you know, otherwise you have, um, you know, even if nobody's complaining, even if the one who got hit hit doesn't complain, it depends. Normally, we wouldn't even look at it if nobody had written a complaint. Um, normally, if somebody just hit somebody else, and they, you know they were just roughhousing, fooling around, or doing whatever, no one's going to write a complaint because people go up, you know, as they say in, in English, you know, in, in the sports world, no harm, no foul, 
you yeah. know. Um, but on the other hand, if people get mad and they're fighting, you know, in hot blood, yeah. people write complaints about that. Even if, you know, any, any bystander would write a complaint about that. I think that a lot of problems can be solved um, without the Judicial Committee, maybe even most problems. Um, I just don't think it's realistic to assume that all people, all the time, are going to be willing to solve their problems. And, you know, we've had experience where just people don't want to talk about it. They just want to break the rules. And they might think they have good reasons to break the rules, and um, they're entitled to think that, but I'm entitled to be at the school and not have to worry about uh, other people interfering with my ability to be there. We don't see it as a problem that people you know, instead of solving a problem themselves with a conflict with someone else, they they sue them and uh, have the judicial committee take care of that. We feel that um, that's also a solution. Uh, you know, you don't have to only solve conflict by talking to the person and you know becoming best friends or something. Sometimes, you know, you just know like there's not a battle to be fought. You just sue the person, get out of your mind, and you know enjoy your day because sometimes a conflict can just ruin your ruin your day, ruin your week. Um, and suing can sometimes be just the right thing to do. I think it's good that there is a formal process in place and that kids uh, understand that, you know, it's freedom and it's responsibility. You know, I, I feel very strongly about this. I mean, I think the two really go together. Um, and so, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a, or if you're going to want the students to be responsible for their behavior, then you're probably going to need some kind of formal process. And it, yeah, you may look at it and say, well, and I think sometimes some people, when they first learn about our school, they, you know, they look at this process and they start thinking, well, if you give students the, the power to decide what other students have to do in terms of you know, doing some kind of consequence or having some kind of consequence, I think a lot of adults start thinking that that's a bad thing. I think most of those people are projecting their own feelings onto it. I think unfortunately that reflects um, a lack of contact that student or that adults and children have these days, and a lot of I think misperceptions come from that. And really, you know, one amazing thing that I have learned is that kids really, um, when you give them the power, they really begin to understand the complexities of power. And they really understand what power, what power means, and what they are capable of doing when they have power. And I think something that's really incredible is that, you know, kids are very measured. You know, it's not like you leave a glass around, you have to clean up the whole school. It's like you leave a glass around, and maybe you have to go do a little chore. You know, and so it's like I say, at our school, it's very practical. And um, I wish more adults understood that. I, I think a lot of adults don't understand that they, because maybe based on their own experience as a child or what just what they think about children in general, um, it's not really true.